Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be learning the basics of Soft Homage Exercise 7. Now the things you'll learn today are going to be pretty universal for programs such as Maya and 3ds Max and Milkshape 3D. So let's get started. After you've opened up Soft Homage, I'm going to start to explain things. Alright, now these boxes here, these boxes are called your viewports. The viewports are used to navigate in the 3D and 2D environment. This will help you edit your model faster just because you don't have to move around as much. Now, for navigating the viewports, you're going to hold down the S key on the keyboard and press the right mouse button. This will let you rotate around your model. And then if you push down the left mouse button, you'll be able to pan. And then holding down the middle mouse button will let you go back and forth, zoom in. Alright, now we're going to learn how to do some basic polygonal editing. So let's zoom in a bit here, select our model, and we're going to go to polygon. Select some polygons on your model, whatever you want to do. And then press one of these buttons down here under the transform menu. The S will let you stretch your model around. The rotate button, which is the R, will let you, of course, rotate it. And the T button stands for translate, which will let you translate your model. So I'm just going to translate them out a bit. And as you can see, the polygons you selected will go out. Now we're going to learn about some point modeling. Where you click the point button, which is right above the polygon button. Select one of these points here, these little blue dots and then click, I'm just going to click translate, you can click whatever else one and it'll just move the polygons that are attached to that point. Next we're going to do edges which is exactly the same thing, just to the left of the polygons select one of these orange edges, some of them are blue and you can also translate these. To do some more advanced stuff you could click the polygon one again, control D and this will allow you to translate it in a more uniform way. Instead of taking all the polygons around it, it will only take the ones you selected. But this can also lead to some really ugly effects. Now we're going to learn about primitives. Primitives are basic models like circles and squares. So go to primitive, poly mesh, and let's make a cylinder. This will give us a nice circle. Scratch that, it gives us a pipe shape. I'm retarded. Okay, now, they have other shapes under that menu as well, such as the actual circle, the sphere here, wow. And you can edit some parameters on this, such as how many polygons on the, and that makes your model look more clear. And if you decrease them, you get some odd shapes too, which can also help out with modeling. Also under the Primitives menu is a menu called Character, where they have many pre-made characters, such as the one down here, which is the dog. All these characters come pre-rigged with a bone system, so they move like they would in the real world. There's also a Character Creator under this menu, if you click Man Maker. These will give you sliders to help you create a character. Now, let's say you're working with an engine such as Source, where you'd have to have all your objects merge into one. So let's select these primitives, and we're going to go to Model, Poly Mesh, Merge. A dialog box will pop up, bring the tolerance down to zero, merge the U's and V's, merge the shapes and animation, and then delete the input operators. Now, no matter which one of these shapes you select, it'll select every other model because technically they're all one model now. Next we're going to learn about some texturing. Let's say I just want to texture a small area of my model, such as these few polygons here. I would select them, go to Render, Texture, Add, Image. Now. Just click No, and this box will pop up. You can click 
one of the textures from here if you have some preloaded, such as this guy's face, or you can go to New from File and select a texture from wherever else. It imports a lot of image formats, so just play around with it. After we select a um, texture projection, it should take a minute to process it onto our model. Okay, and now as you can see, it applied his texture to it, but his face isn't there just because the texture is too big for this model. You can change that, but I'll be teaching that later in a more advanced video. Thanks for subscribing everybody, and I would really appreciate a thumbs up. This is like my 50th take doing this video.